Hello world, Calc Programmer one here. I wanted to do a new video about OpenRGB to go over the features that we've added to version 0.7, which has been recently released. The last video I did about OpenRGB was how to install version 0.3, so it's been a while since I last did a video. One of the big new things that we've added in the most recent 0.7 release is a plugin architecture that allows OpenRGB to be extended with plugins. And the big thing that we've added with this is an effects engine. So an effects engine is basically a set of effects that we've created that can synchronize across all of your devices as long as they have what we call direct mode. And uh, this has been requested pretty heavily because it allows you to have all of your stuff synchronized with uh, one or more different uh, patterns and effects. And so <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and install OpenRGB 0.7 for Windows. And um, so we're just going to open up a web browser and go to openrgb.org. And then we'll scroll down to the bottom of the page. And down here it says download OpenRGB 0.7. That's the stable release. We're going to click Windows 64-bit, let that download, and then open it. And we'll just extract that. We'll just copy that to Downloads. Uh, it's a zip file. And then we'll go ahead and open uh, OpenRGB Windows 64-bit. And right-click on OpenRGB.exe and Run as Administrator. It needs to be run as Administrator at least once to allow stuff to set up. Uh, after that, you should be able to launch it without Administrator. Uh, but if you launch it without Administrator the first time, your RAM and motherboard might not be detected. Um, and then, so now we've opened it up and it's detected our devices. And it came up with this Resize the Zones box. Let's just go ahead and close out that. And so what this is, is any device that has an addressable RGB header on it, whether it's your, a motherboard or whether it's an external USB RGB controller such as my Corsair Lighting Node Pro, basically it doesn't know how many LEDs are connected to those ARGB outputs. And so in this case on the Lighting Node Pro, channel 1 I have fans hooked up. I have three Corsair ML140 RGB fans each of those fans has four LEDs, and so three LED or three fans times four LEDs per fan gives us a total of 12 LEDs. So we're just going to put 12 in there. On channel two, I just have a single 15 LED strip that I cut to length and wired it into the Lighting Node Pro. So that one has 15 LEDs. And then we're just going to do save and close. And so now it should automatically have set up the size on the Lighting Node Pro. So we can just toggle the LED view here and see that we have 12 on channel 1 and 15 on channel 2. And um, so let's just go ahead and switch to the camera view. And then I'm going to move this off to the side here so that we can see it and then uh, make it big. So, as you can see, between these two different views, I have all of my stuff is detected, and right now it's all green. Uh, that's what I had it set to before opening OpenRGB. So, we're going to go ahead and try to change it. So, I'll just click on red, and then I'll do Apply All Devices. Now, the camera views are a little bit out of sync. They are running a little bit behind because it's streaming from two different phones. So in reality, as soon as I click this button, say let's go to green and hit apply all, everything changes immediately uh, from my point of view. But because the cameras are a bit laggy right now, you're seeing them um, a little bit delayed. So we'll try blue. Everything changes to blue. And then, uh, so it can change to all these different colors. And you can also pick a color on the color wheel, just like an orange. Let's do that. But the other thing that we've added in 0 0.7, so this is 0 0.7. Um, the other thing we've added that I talked about earlier was the plugins. 
So I have this tab here called Plugins, and as you can see right now, it's empty. We don't have any plugins installed. But the plugin that I want to show you is the Effects Engine plugin, the OpenRGB Effects plugin. So let's go to HTTPS gitlab.com slash open RGB developers slash open RGB effects plugin. So now we have the effects plugin. Um, just go over here and get rid of that for now. So um, basically, we're going to go ahead and download this plugin. So let's go over here to the green check mark. This is going to be the very latest commit uh, in this project. Click the green check mark. We have builds of the plugin available for every operating system that we support. So Linux 32 and 64, Mac OS ARM, Mac OS Intel, and then Windows 32 and 64. So let's go ahead and download the Windows 64 version of the plugin. And so we click on that and it comes up with this. Uh, over here on the right we have job artifacts. Click on download. And then that downloads. And let's open that. And it's a OpenRGBFX plugin.dll. Let's copy that over to downloads. And then we can close all this out. And let's bring back our devices. So now over here we have the plugins tab and it's empty. So let's click install plugin. And then we should be able to see this. Uh, so we're going to go to downloads and then we're going to pick this DLL that we just downloaded, OpenRGBFX plugin.dll. And we'll hit open. And now here it is. You can see that the plugin has been added to open our GB. And we now have this tab up at the top called effects. So if we click on the effects tab, we can now see that we have a list of our devices on the right. We have a control pane in the middle, which is empty right now. We have a list where the plugins or the effects that are loaded will show. And then we have uh, a box up here where we can add effects. So let's click on this. And let's go ahead and add a very basic effect. Let's do um, Rainbow Wave. And click the plus and it will add Rainbow Wave to the list. And then we can go over here and select which devices we want to use. I'm just going to select all. And then the default speed is a little high so let's turn that down. And then we'll click on start. And that should start uh, all the devices are now doing a Rainbow Wave. And so, yeah, the cameras have caught up, and so we can see that everything is doing a rainbow pattern all at once. So we can adjust the properties of that. We can increase the frequency, which makes the rainbow uh, repeat faster. And then we can adjust the speed. We can make it go really fast. We can make it go really slow. We can turn the brightness up and down. And then we can change the frame rate of the effect as well if we want to save on CPU or if we have devices that don't like updating too fast, we can slow it down. Um, so those are some settings. And then we can experiment with some other effects here like, uh, well, let's see, we have, uh, let's go with Visor. This one's pretty good. Um, we'll just select everything. We'll just put on random colors. And this one is just like a sweeping effect. And we can change the speed. We can make it go faster. We can make the trails wider. Um, we can, if we take off that, we can set the colors. So let's do like red and green and then there is also in here which is pretty neat is there is a port of my keyboard visualizer program that's under audio it's called audio visualizer 
And this is basically Keyboard Visualizer, but it's been ported to the Effects plugin. So let's go ahead and let's turn off Silent Background. We'll make the background a little dimmer at like uh, 25. And we'll pick um, white for the foreground mode. And we'll pick the microphone as our input. And then let's go ahead and, well, we can see that as I talk, it is picking up the microphone and everything, at least the keyboard is moving. Uh, it's probably pretty delayed on the video, but let's go ahead and increase the amplitude a bit more. And now everything should be picking it up, especially if I knock on the desk a little bit. And uh, so yeah, I can go over here and let's just look at the individual stuff. Uh, here is the PC affecting or reacting to the microphone. And then here is the desk, everything reacting to it, including my keyboard, which is the Razer Huntsman Elite right now. Uh, so you can see the effect moving on the keyboard. So let's just go back to this and we'll just close out of that. And so now if you want to stop the effects, all you got to do is click the X and the effect goes away. Then you can come back here and set a static color. So that is basically what I wanted to show you of installing OpenRGB 0.7 and then the effects plugin and testing out a few effects. Uh, there are quite a few effects in here and there's a lot being added constantly. Um, the developer behind this, he's been really good about adding lots of effects and he's been doing a great job with this plugin. I'm really impressed with it. And so um, even, even shaders. This new one, this new plugin, or this new uh, effect is basically OpenGL shader scripts that are running on your GPU and controlling your lights. Uh, well, where's the one that I like? Um, I think it's Crazy Lights. Yeah. So you can see here, if I start this, there's a pat, a little um, this little square here is being rendered on the GPU. And you can actually view the shader code, and most most of these are taken from Shader Toy examples. Uh, you can go to Shader Toy and view a bunch of different shaders, but basically they've been copy pasted into OpenRGB, and then converted, basically rendered on here, and then converted into RGB effects for your computer for all of your RGB, which is really cool. And this opens up a lot of opportunities for cool custom effects um, built into this plugin and it also supports audio effects which uh, I'm not going to demonstrate right now but yeah you can do use audio and uh, configure the audio so you can have sound reactive shaders as well which is pretty cool so uh, with that I think that's everything I wanted to share today so thank you for watching this video thank you for using OpenRGB and I plan to make another set of videos for Linux and Mac OS as well to follow this one. So thanks for watching.